Welcome to the Breakthrough Podcast with your host, Reba Hobbs, a podcast motivated to help survivors of trauma to heal and focus on their full potential. Hey guys, thank you for tuning in to another edition of the Breakthrough Podcast. Of course, I am your host, Reba Hobbs, and I am coming to you today, basically taking off a break from last week. And so I'm coming to you today. We're back. I had to take a break because I was spending time um, with these last few weekends in Chicago with family and friends, and I enjoyed every bit, every moment. But um, I had to recalibrate myself and get back into what I have to do, what the business is and my plan and what God is telling me to do and my purpose. So do not forget the word of the year is elevation and we're just going to go right into today's episode. I wanted to talk to you today about, of course, it's October. So last podcast, I talked about it being domestic violence and also breast cancer awareness month. But today we're going to talk about domestic violence. Domestic violence, of course, if people, my familiar listeners know that domestic violence is a part of my history and my story. And I will be remiss if I did not talk about domestic violence for the uh, month of October. Yes, I am transitioning, but I also still help coach people to heal from domestic violence, their trauma and their childhood trauma. So I do it all in the same realm, but at the same time, I am just not doing domestic violence. I am transitioning from domestic violence to trauma, past trauma, and how to help people heal for their future and where they at currently. So that doesn't mean that, what that does mean is that I don't just coach and help people that have been through domestic violence, but I still added an extra, if you want to say layer. Because, of course, you know the word of the year is elevation. So, we're going to the next level. So, this was something that God placed upon my heart to expand me in my business to where I need to go, what I need to do to expand just from the spectrum, just not domestic violence. But there are men and women that need to heal from past trauma. I think we all have trauma. So, trauma in itself comes along with the territory of being an adult. Our teenagers, our children have trauma. Um, And so next week I'm talking about some things that I'm doing with teenagers um, coming up that God placed upon my heart to do. And I'll share with you guys first because a lot of people don't know what I'm personally doing in my next level and my next step. So I am here as an open platform, as an open person. The only thing I can tell you, like I tell you every week, I can only tell my story on how to help and heal because it's something that I did and I am continuously doing. I also have to remind you, I am not perfect just because I am a life coach. I do this um, for a living, but I also do it for my church. Um, I, I actually, that's actually where I get most of my, if you want to say practice from, um, I have students right now that every other week I coach and teach from a domestic violence realm because that's what I coach about. And that's how the coach program goes, but I also teach about trauma too. And so I'm excited. I, um, I'm actually teaching class tonight. So I'm very excited about where God is taking me in this next season. I am doing my due diligence on listening more. Um, This month is really a big transparent month for me because I'm fasting, I'm praying, but I'm also walking into what God is calling me to do. Um, Last month, he pulled in a poured in a lot of things that what my next season entails. And, at the same time, because I'm excited, um, it's nerve, it's not nerve wracking, but I'll say it's a fear. Uh, and we'll talk about that sometime later. 
in a later podcast this morning. I want to talk about that too. Um, but where God is having me right now today, I really be remiss if I did not talk about domestic violence. So for the people that don't know, if you, if you are listening to my podcast and if you have my book and you know my story, great. You can hear it again, or you can hear the details. It might be some dip, different details I talk about because we know we don't talk a lot about the same thing every time. So it might be something you hear. And if you're new, thank you for listening. Um, because you may know someone that is experiencing domestic violence. There is a slogan. Everyone knows someone that's experiencing domestic violence. And I also add on that let's not just put it on the spectrum of it, that it just happens to women. It happens to men too. I actually know personal stories where men are getting abused. So um, that's the reason why I'm glad that it's called Domestic Violence Awareness Month and it's not called Women's Domestic Violence Awareness Month. It's not a gender-based thing. I think you we're getting away from that um, in a whole, but that's a whole nother story. But so I'm going to tell my story again in a short form because you know on this platform but I'm going to talk about it from a generational purpose so we're going to go there and then we just get started and um I'll let the Lord use me the way he wants to of course I have things I want to talk about but usually when I'm on my platform God (laughs) deals me another way and hey that's how it works can't do anything without the Lord I want to talk about, I want to start with how domestic violence, first of all, let's, let's state what it is. It's anything that's physical, mental, emotional, verbal. I think I named all of them. Physical, mental, emotional, verbal, um, abuse. So when we're talking about domestic violence, we're just not talking about the physical part. We're talking about everything because a lot of people in the past, it has uh, made its way to be bigger. But in a lot of people in the past, uh, ancestors, our, our, well, our history of our parents and grandparents, I put it like that, and older generations, they have, it was um, so silenced back in that generation. So if it did happen and if it did happen to our parents and our grandparents, it wasn't brought about where it was important enough where it became a statement. Now, domestic violence over the years have became a known statement because there are people that are dying from it, women, uh, particularly that die from it. And everybody is not a survivor. I, I list myself and I list my my clients as survivors. That's what we, we list ourselves as because anything that you have made it out of, you are a survivor of that experience. So that's why I call everybody and I call my clients, we're survivors. Domestic violence has been a part of my generational trauma history um, for that I can remember and what was told my grandmother experienced it, rest her soul, and my mom experienced it. And I didn't necessarily see it from my mom, but I also knew the stories. My mother was very verbal. She was a, a a great parent where she was not silent about what was going on with her or went, what went on with her, with her children necessarily, that she didn't want us to walk in her footsteps. And also, me and my sisters, each individually, I have four sisters, well, three sisters, it's four of us. They both experienced, all of them experienced it. So generational curses and i talked about this um on my podcast um back in march or april i have a, have a whole platform i talk about generational curses and generational blessings generational curses um stay in our family because we don't stop it and we don't become aware of it and we don't say the buck stops here what well, i'm telling you today on this podcast and i've de- been declaring it for the last few months that it will stop with me it will not get to my two children. I have a boy and I have a girl. My son is 14. My daughter is five now. He'll be 15. They're 10 years apart. Um, and so it has to stop with me. I'm going to declare it's going to stop with me and my family on my side. Because it affects so many that we don't understand the 
the effects of it down the line that even if we get out of it, it still affects our children. Like I said, I never seen my mom experience it, but I heard the stories and look, it still affected us in some kind of way. And it still hit each and every one of her daughters. Okay. Um, when you're talking about stopping it and stopping the trauma, that means you're getting healing, counseling, therapy, education behind it, because the education part is very vital to getting the healing that you need because the education part is what to help you to not get in another abusive relationship to know what to um, expect to know what to tell your children what to expect and I think my mother at the time she was doing the education part but I think she did the education part to the best she knew how because a lot of our parents didn't know how a lot of things that happen with our grandparents and our parents they happen in their lives that, like I said, it was silenced. Um, you know, this big thing about what marriage consists of back then, it's a whole different definition of what it consists of now. And staying in a marriage and staying with someone that was uh, is physically abusing you back in the day was um, not staying with someone, I put like that. It's so, that someone that was physically abusing you was taboo. Um, it was hidden. It was a fear and it was something that was new for them. I think our grandparents didn't know what to do because they was in a situation where this wasn't very known. It was very silenced. So something that was silenced and wasn't very known became normal. And that's why I want to talk about generational curses of domestic violence because we could normalize domestic violence in a sense of where it happened to my grandmother well, it happened to my mom and it happened to me. So, I mean, I guess this was supposed to happen. That's a lie. We don't have to accept the negative of what happened to our parents and grandparents to affect our children and our great grandchildren and our grandchildren and there to come until Jesus come back. We don't have to accept the effect of the effects of what happened in past traumas that happened to us personally that could happen to our children. And that's the reason why I say the buck stops with me because even though my 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 two children, where my son mostly might have experienced it and seen it on my end, and he has heard the stories and read my book. I have two books out. If you guys don't know, I do have two books, uh, A Blessing in Disguise. That's my personal story about how I heal from uh, domestic violence. But I also have a new book um, that it's not new anymore, but it's almost been a year uh, for Ashes to Beauty. And it's just my my story about my whole life history It's my personal story on how God has um, used each and every story that I went through and how to, and how I God was there the whole time and healed is basically my life. So it's my life from birth, my mom's life up until now. It's a really good book. Um, so, but what I was saying back to what I was saying, we don't have to accept what is happening to us with generational curses of domestic violence. Um, my backstory, let's go there. My backstory, my first experience with domestic violence was when I was in a relationship when I was 20. Um, I was in a relationship with my first boyfriend. Um, and pretty much we was very violent towards each other. I'm going to have to put that out there. <laughs> But it still was a domestic violence relationship. And a lot of people don't think that domestic violence is just both you guys. No, it's, it is. It's toxicity and it's both you guys. When it's both you guys, it's still domestic violence. Um, that was my first experience with domestic violence. Something that I thought was normal at that time. I just thought that, you know, that's what boyfriends and girlfriends do. Uh, my mother was a single mother of six six kids. of two brothers, too. And... Pretty much I just thought that boyfriend and girlfriends argue and they fight. Well, me learning later that that was just unhealthy and it just was an unhealthy situation, an unhealthy relationship. Of course, it was my first. So me learning a lot of things first that have been my first abusive relationship. Yeah, it was an effect, but it was just like, oh, okay, it happened. It's done. It's over with. Okay, whatever. It's done. And what I'm saying is when you get out of a situation and you be like, oh, it's done. I ain't in that situation no more. I didn't get therapy. I didn't get counseling. I didn't get healing. 
I just said, okay, the relationship is over. So that relationship, that situation is over. Well, years later, I had my son about 25. So, cause I got out of that relationship when I was 21, I ended up getting a new relationship and I end up experiencing it with my son's father. And that went from arguing to physical, um, to mental, verbal. I didn't experience that in the first the first one. I just experienced with arguing. Then we, had, I just hit him and it hit me back. And it's like more of him defending himself. And then me learning that, you know, you can't be hitting people, you know, as a woman. You cannot hit people just because you're angry. I was a very angry person. I talk about that in my other backstories. But then I went from that to the physical in this relationship, the mental, the verbal. And then that's when I was like, something's not right. <laughs> this wasn't happening in every relationship. <laughs> um... So it made me make it even then going through it, making a determination, even though I had a lot of low self-esteem, I had a lot of insecurities at that time. I did not have a great relationship with my mom. We was just really in a bad place. Now me and my mother is great now, but knowing then we was just in a bad place. I accepted a lot of things and I don't blame it because we didn't have a relationship. I just say that that's just something that happened at that time. And it's something I had to learn from. I went through that relationship uh, and it was just really toxic. The whole relationship was very toxic to the point I end up being in the hospital from it. Now, let's backtrack. Me being in the hospital from it has nothing to do with just I could have been in a worse situation. It has to do with my son by that time. Of getting out of it. My son was three weeks. And when I say hospital, I meant to the point of fact I was really, really abused at that that day. Talking about this or whatever, because I'm healed still uh from it, it's still not easy. Because sometimes you gotta remember certain things that happen. And sometimes you wanna forget. But I wanna put in that. You cannot forget what happened to you because it actually is a testimony. And I think with these last three months, I think God was trying to um, explain it to me, explain it to me in a way where he wants me to understand I am helping other people on this platform. I am helping others like myself that have been through things or going through things like myself and that hiding your story does not make it go away. Not talking about it does not make it go away, even if you get out of it. Because there are some women that have not survived. Now, once I got out of the hospital and I went into a domestic violence shelter, that's around this time I found out about domestic violence shelters. That was actually a domestic violence shelter. And I'm in there with women that's married. And mind you, I'm young at this time, so I'm only 25. And so I'm in there with women that's in their 40s and 50s. And I'm sitting there like... Oh, you go through this when you're married too? <laughs> because I'm at the time, I, I didn't know. And I'm like, I thought this was just a boyfriend, girlfriend thing, you know? And some of the women was in there. It's a program that you have to be a part of and you have to follow the rules and you have to do what you got to do. But because you're a survivor, they're trying to save your life. Some women couldn't take it and they went back. Some women went back and it, it was very sad because when we heard the stories about our roommates leaving and you may have a roommate, a woman that's a roommate and they're not coming back and we come in and then there and the people are coming to pack up their stuff and you're like, and they telling us in group meetings that they didn't make it. They went back to their abuser. That hit a little bit differently than me just being in a relationship and just like, oh my, like you go through this married. Wow. Okay. It hit very differently. Like I said, I was lucky enough once I got out the hospital, I was one of the survivors that survived. It could have been my story. Um, I could have been not in even got to the domestic violence and get out and everything. Because when you in that situation and you feeling so lost and you feeling so alone, it's most it's one of the most 
loneliest times. I don't care if people have friends and family around. I don't care if you you are the most popular person. You getting abused is one of the most loneliest times in your life where you feel like I'm the only one going through this and how can I tell this story? You don't want the person to look at your mate or your spouse in a different way. So you don't want to tell the story. You don't want to feel like, oh, I got to start my life over because I got kids. So you don't want to tell the story. And I'm talking from a person that actually been through it both. And you 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 don't want to tell the story because you're too embarrassed. Uh, how could I let this happen? Then you don't want to hear the back lips of family and friends. You better not be with him anymore, and you gotta leave. You it's a lot that goes through your head as a person that have been abused and telling a story where you're so embarrassed that I don't know what to do. And then when you uh, you call yourself in love, because I'll say it like that, you call yourself in love, and I'm saying that everything wasn't love, but you look at it like, oh my God, I got to start over. I, I I don't, sometimes you feel like, I don't want this to be my story. I'm going to talk from me. Sometimes I felt like I do not want this to be my story. Even when I experienced it in my own marriage, I felt like I did not want that to be my story. And experience it then and in the marriage or whatever and not because I didn't go through what I went through before is because I end up turning into the abuser in my marriage and then being the person that was the abuser verbally that it led to physical on the other hand and I had to learn still then at the beginning that I had to understand I had to change I had to pick different but I have to choose different but I also had to know that what signs and awareness and all that stuff I learned in that shelter after that time and years later getting married and everything else that I had to learn that this is my story and I got the choice and a chance to change it if I want to so you don't you can't now let me say this going worker you cannot make anyone do something or not do something we're going to go on work and say that. But you do have a choice to change you. You have a choice to make the decision to say, did I play a part in certain things? And I knew at that time I played a part in because I've been abused before that I didn't want to get abused again, that I became the abuser. That's the part I played. That I acknowledged then that I became the abuser. Now, other things happened after that and whatever, but it doesn't matter. I had to heal from that. That's when I had to really get into, when I was in the, the shelter, I got into therapy. And that transition of healing and learning about myself and learning about what, who I want to be and this person that I'm, I'm sitting on this platform and talking to you as, is the person I envisioned at that time when I was in the shelter. I envisioned this woman that was happy, healed, and whole, and that got herself together and her life together and wanted to tell her story to others like me to say, okay, I've been through it, but I got through it, and I could be a better person because of it. When I got into my marriage, even though I, I end up being somewhat of an abuser, and I had to learn from that, I still had to learn that, okay, I need to help someone else too, because it does say that sometimes when in the domestic violence, I learned this in, when I was in the shelter, that you do come into the, become the abuser because you're so trying to fight against the, being the abusee. So you become the abuser and not understanding the healthiness of what you're supposed to say, what you're supposed to do in order for it to not to happen. At that time, I didn't know. This was nine years ago, okay? So... Currently, up until now, I have totally, totally changed. Um, I am loving myself because I had to learn to love myself all over again. That I wouldn't accept any of that. I wouldn't accept who and what happened to me to be my story or my definition of what my future could be. Also, currently, I had to look at myself and say, is this the story I want to accept that my kids see, that my son sees? My son could turn into an abuser or he could be the one getting abused because like I said at the beginning of this podcast, 
abuse is just not on the woman's, I mean, on the man's side. It's on the women's side, too. I know personal stories of women wives that abuse their husbands. Now, it might not have ended in some, well, nowadays it is, because if you look at stories, it's a lot of stories where women are killing men. Um, and it might not end like that, but at the same time, do I even want them to be that story? No. So we have to stop the generational trauma of domestic violence where it is. Another factor I wanted to bring up because of reason why I brought the program that I coach into my church is because church itself is so silenced about domestic violence. And it was a big thing for me that even when I was in the church that I couldn't tell the people that was in church or didn't want to tell people. I always told my pastor because my pastor, he's just been my spiritual father. My pastor has been my number one supporter, advocate of everything. But being too embarrassed to tell other wives, that could have been going through the same thing I was going through. Being embarrassed to tell other women or people in the church, I'm talking about it in the church, that you get shunned upon because it's like, oh, that ain't my marriage. So mm -mm, mm -mm, don't come up here with that, that drama or whatever, or feeling like you're a burden on someone else because you're putting your story and your, your story on someone else to make them feel like they got to help you. And that's as I tell them, we're not asking for help. We just asking for understanding. Victims are not asking at the, I'm a survivor, but when you're a victim, Nine times out of ten, you're not asking for help. You're asking for understanding. You're asking for support, okay? Um, you could be asking for help, but nine times out of ten, it doesn't mean take me under your wing and get me away. It means help me and support me in this process that I feel like I'm alone, that I feel like I'm not going to go back, that I feel like that um, I don't have to go back in a, in a sense that I have nobody else, so I might as well just go back and get abused or run back or Whatever the situation is. I hate that it's silence in the church. I hate that we don't bring it up in the church enough. So this is why I chose this platform and other platforms that I do. Writing books, going into my church, being a coach, a life coach, um, having a coaching program in my church. That's the reason why I chose to do it because... We don't, we know a lot of people that's in the church that we don't talk about it. There are ministers and pastors and whoever you want to call it, whatever all those titles is, nobody cares when you're getting abused. They are getting abused. And we need to talk about it and speak up about it. Uh, everyone, like I said before, everyone doesn't survive domestic violence. So just think if you had someone that was in the church that you knew, that was a, a wife of someone or a husband of someone. And you come back to church and you hear uh, they was going through abuse. Their husband killed them. Their wife killed them. You would feel some type of way because you would feel like, oh, my God, they was they believed in God. They was praying and they was worshiping every day. And they was, you know, always looking like they was lovey-dovey and together. And the backstory is, no, but she was dealing with abuse for 10, 15 years. He was dealing with abuse for 10 to 15 years. And someone in the story snapped. Everyone can't have and doesn't have a story that they survived. I am the survivor that is speaking on the victim's part, but I'm also the survivor that are speaking on the person that died on their behalf, on the person that's in the grave. I am that survivor. I'm speaking for them, whoever they are. I'm speaking for the victim. You may be listening to this, or you may know someone that is a victim of domestic violence. I'm speaking up for them. I'm speaking up for the church lady, the church man, the person that don't know how to tell someone because they're too embarrassed because they may be a pastor, a minister, a wife, a husband, someone that works in a church. It happens all the time. And I just feel like we should stop being quiet and we all should be advocates because I am a domestic violence advocate. And this is such a very important month for me. It's very important, just not the month, but me being a celebratory thing because we don't have to make it to a sad thing. But awareness is awareness. This is why I'm using this platform to make you aware of there may be, it may be your daughter. It may be your your wife, it may be your friend that's going through it. 
And it may be your son. It may be your nephew. Let's be real. That's going through it. And it may and it might be a little harder for boys to talk about. And let's be real too, because they they too embarrassed that that this don't happen to boys. But there are boys out there like my son that don't hit women. That that's very soft and gentle. That if you know, it's a lot of stories that my son told. And uh, if you guys listened to his his podcast a couple of weeks ago, he talked about him being um a. Uh, and I say abuse, but it was abuse, bully. But if most of the people that he got bullied was from girls, he didn't go to school and be like, oh, "Okay, I'm about to punch them in their face, or I'm about to hit them back." And my son was getting physically abused by these girls, so it does happen. We're not teaching our teenagers that domestic violence is real; that it can happen in their day and age. Why do we think it's just not going to happen with with with? It's not supposed to happen with females or when we get older. It happens with our teens more often than not. We need to be aware of that. Also, the reason why my name, my main thing is you may know someone. And this is the reason why I use this platform and others. You can find me on Instagram, the Breakthrough Coach. I am on Facebook as the Breakthrough Coach. But I use this platform as a free will to say you are not alone. The person that you know may not be alone. And that we all need to heal from something. If you think about your past trauma and your past situation, it may be a generational curse. But I also talk about how we could stop generational curses and we make them generational blessings. I'm here to tell you that domestic violence will not hit my kids and they will have a generational blessing. Their mom, they're going to see their mom to the day she died always be a domestic violence advocate. If whatever avenue God is going to use, have me to use, I'm going to run with it. So I have a powerful story, but there's money that didn't have a story to tell that they couldn't tell their story because they're in the grave. So like I said, I am the spokesperson. I am the speaker. I am the person that's speaking up for them. I'm also the person that's speaking up for the victim right now that may be listening to this podcast that's saying, I have a story to tell, but I can't tell nobody. I am the advocate for them. So this is the Breakthrough Podcast. I thank you. We are being aware of Domestic Violence Awareness Month this month, and I thank you for listening, and I'll see you guys back next week. Thank you. Thank you for listening to The Breakthrough Podcast. To learn more about Reba House, please visit Instagram and Facebook at The Breakthrough Coach Online and also YouTube.com at The Breakthrough Podcast. You can also visit www.rebabell.com for breakthrough coaching or merchandise. Also, please visit and join the Facebook community support at Facebook.com slash Domestic Survivors Only. Tune in next time for another episode of the Breakthrough Podcast with Reba Hobbs. Thank you for joining us.